go live on the stream. How delayed are we? I don't even know. Don't even know. Watching the stream back and we're very delayed. All right, but we are live, I think. I'm pretty sure at least. Uh, all right, I think we're live, guys. I think we are live. Uh, sound off in the comments or the chat or whatever. Um, about time live. I'm like two minutes late, bro. Relax. So, um, all right. So yeah, what's what's going on, guys? Um, I know I know I am two minutes late, but yes, we are now live. We are. Uh, I think this is the first time that I'm streaming from uh, from this set. So I, I redid my, like, this is, a, I'm in my basement and my basement kind of serves as my office and filming set and whatnot. And, um, a month or two ago, I had completely reorganized everything down here. It took me quite a while, uh, moved the filming set to this like caddy corner kind of location. Um, and I redid like the, all my lighting and stuff is mounted to the ceiling, which it was before, but I had to like swing it around. Uh, and I have like this desk behind me now with some things on the wall. And I don't know, I never even actually got to ask you guys because I, I haven't done anything live from here. And I, I didn't make a video about redoing the set. So what do you guys think of of the, of the this whole setup? Is it any real, really different? It's, it shouldn't really be all that different. Um, but it gives a little bit more depth behind me. And, uh, you know, this wall, I hope to at some point fill up. Uh, with or you know at least put a few more things on and um, it actually gives me a little more space um, laterally uh, for for different projects and also more distance to the camera believe it or not so I could have you know bigger things on the desk uh, and yeah so um, yeah I never asked you guys what you thought about it I mean if you have any comments or things that I should do or whatever, let me know. But uh, today we are, uh, we're going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the comments and the chat in a, in a second. But uh, Mike is here. So be nice to Mike. He does wield a, a big hammer. Um, so be careful around him. But uh, we're going to be doing a couple things today. Um, and I have a, I have some boxes that I want to open live, uh, including a box uh, that has some stuff in it that's embargoed currently. And I got permission from the company who sent it to me to open it on stream as long as I uh, comply with certain parameters in order to do that. So I'm going to be showing you guys a product early that nobody else has seen before. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I also have some products here that I haven't yet shown uh, or done a video on on the channel that I just haven't had a chance to that I wanted to, but I'm going to show you guys and I have a couple of the boxes to open. Plus, I wanted to talk about this. Um, so this is my broken uh, PowerColor Red Dragon RX 6900 XT that I did a video on last week. Um, so yeah, there's there's some stuff that I wanted to go over with with this. What's going to happen with this? Um, how sad I am that it happened. Uh, but we got a couple, two different camera angles here. So we got the main one. Uh, we have uh, this one. So I'm going to be able to do stuff like this, where I could show you, you know, close-ups of things. Uh, and then we have the side by side. So hopefully uh, between all three camera angles um it'll be a good show and um i am excited to be live because i haven't been live in a few weeks um a couple of um i don't know last couple weeks I've, I've tried to arrange a few things um kyle and i are actually trying to do something together timing just hasn't lined up yet but um that's always a good time i haven't i mean i haven't seen kyle since ces like i haven't seen anybody since ces um but um he and I, you know, I always have a good time together. So that would be really fun. I think get him on the channel, get him on stream and, you know, maybe just shoot the shit or whatever. Um, 
Super chat from MB67. I like the setup and hopefully you can get those broken GPUs repaired. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. So we're, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but let me, um, let me scroll up just a tad. And um, let's see. There's screen tearing on the video feed. Really? How is that a thing? Hold on. If that's true, then um, maybe I can adjust. Let's see. Hmm. I definitely don't want there to be tearing. So just give me a second here, guys. I'm going to see if I can fix that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to while still streaming. Um, this shouldn't, this shouldn't be tearing. Hmm. Enable free sync on my cameras. The main camera is awful. It's making me nauseous. Okay. Well, I, there's no way that I could possibly fix this without stopping the stream. And my settings are the same as they've always been. I haven't changed anything. Um, okay, so I, there's no motion on the screen right now. So I don't know why there would be tearing. But I don't know. I'm sorry if there is tearing. I, there's really not anything that I could do about it right now without stopping the stream. So I'm hoping that it's not awful. Like, I'm looking at the feed right now in OBS, and I don't see any problems. Like, even if I move around. I don't know why I'm doing this. It seems fine. I don't know. I'm very sorry if, you know. Okay. So, anyway, let's get back to it. I'm going to, um, okay. People are telling me it's fine now. All right. So, it's fine. Uh, so... What do you guys want to see first? Do you want me to talk about um, this thing or do you want me to open some boxes? Let me know uh, in the chat. But uh, thank you so much for everybody for, for stopping by um, and coming and hanging out. Uh, we got 73 people in here now and more piling in. So that's awesome. Um, probably, as always, probably do this for about an hour or so. Um, and uh, if, you know, if we go a little bit longer, then we go a little bit longer, but it kind of depends on if you guys are firing questions away or anything like that. Um, so GPU, GPU talk, 6900. Okay, so we'll do GPU first. So if you guys are or are not familiar, I will recap for you either way. Um, so this is the PowerColor 6900 XT, my camera would focus on it, there we go, uh, that um, last week I was doing some extreme overclocking on it and um, uh, I've, I've since talked to a couple of people uh, about what could potentially have happened with this card and I think I have a little bit better insight as to what was going on and or maybe how to fix it. So for those of you who don't know, um, I was doing some uh, some extreme overclocking work and I put this under uh, LN2 pot and, I used, and dry ice, brought the temperatures way down, was doing some overclocking. I had really, really bad stability problems. I was using the AMD or the Igor's lab, the more power tool, basically. The... These cards are way, way more locked down than their NVIDIA counterparts. And as such, they are very difficult to get any kind of decent scores over, so scores with. So one of the things that you can do is you can use a program to basically edit the registry and allow this card to pull more wattage because stock, this was limited to like, I think 323 watts. And this is a three on here like a three eight pin pcie card can you guys see that so what the hell right 323 watts with this giant vrm on here 
and three PCIe power connectors. So basically, I used the more power tool. Uh, I edited everything so that I could pull about 420, 425 watts with it. And that actually may have been the culprit versus the what I originally thought, which was water under the die. Honestly, it could be either of them, but so since last week, I've spoken with uh, Joe Staponzi, who is Bearded Hardware, is one of the best overclockers in the world. Uh, and I spoke with Buildzoid, uh, who's from actually Hardcore Overclocking, and somebody you might know from uh, Steve's channel, Gamers Nexus. He, he does like PCB analysis and stuff like that. He's very familiar with the onboard components, all the SMDs that are soldered to this board. So... Um, Basically, what it comes down to is it's likely that I blew a power stage on this card. Uh, whether or not that is related to any moisture or water issues, it's very hard to say, uh, but it's possible. It's also possible that I was just pumping too much wattage through it for what it's supposed to take, and it fried one of the power stages. Um I would be very surprised if it just, considering the way that this board is set up, if I just cooked it by by putting 400 watts through it, because you uh, a comparable PCB with an NVIDIA graphics card can take five, 600 watts and keep on trucking, and this was nowhere near that. Maybe it's some kind of function of um, the Navi power delivery, how that works. I honestly don't know. And um, in, from speaking with the the experts on the subject, it would be very difficult for me to diagnose unless I had like, I could physically look at the board and look at one of the power stages and see that it had it had fried basically, that it was burned. And I, it's that, I don't see that. If, I mean, if you guys wanna look at the card again a little bit closer, um, there's nothing on here that it would indicate there's any kind of physical damage to any of these power stages memory components or even the die itself so um for now it remains kind of a mystery but the problem is th in order to diagnose it we need somebody with uh the skill of lewis rossman basically but somebody who has that knowledge applied to graphics cards um i had spoken with um with lewis briefly um, when I had another issue and he specifically said to me that he can't help when it comes to stuff like this. So I'm not gonna reach out to him again. Um, oh, uh, I got a super chat from uh, Ziv Zoolander. Zoolander, $3.33 naked GPUs. Yeah, well, at least one of them. Uh, so, um, so unfortunately, Lewis can't be of help. Um, Buildzoid is in England and did, he doesn't know if he'd be comfortable working on this anyway. Um, I'll talk to Joe, he's in Florida. That's a possibility, but I don't even know if he has any familiarity with, I know he's soldered on like capacitors and stuff, um, but I don't know about power stages. So um, we'll see, I'll talk to him. And if possible, I would love to resurrect this and I'll make you guys a promise um, that if I could get this particular card working again, I will try to do more extreme overclocking with it. But if I can't get this one working again, I, I won't be doing any more extreme overclocking with my remaining GPUs. Uh, because at this point, this card is just a loss. Uh, Power color is not gonna warranty it. Um, it. The warranty is not transferable. I'm not the original purchaser of this card, even though it was new when I got it. And um, the, w the manner in which it failed is not something that Power Colors warranty would cover anyway. So right now this card is just a loss. And if I could get it working again, cool. We'll, we'll just, we'll keep it chalked up as a loss and then we'll see what it could do. But um, other than that, you know, there's nothing really, nothing else really going on, unfortunately, with this card. I, I've been working on it all week and... Um, I wish that I could get it working again because it is, it's a great GPU. So, all uh, right. Uh, Glex 25, try using a thermal camera. So the problem is that this card will not take any power. As soon as the, the power connectors are hooked up, 
the circuitry on the uh, power supply trips, it won't put any power at all through it. So there's no way that I could potentially even check if anything's getting hot or not. Um, Mars Drive-In says, then I hope it doesn't get fixed. Didn't look like you had too much fun. I had an enormous amount of fun and I think extreme overclocking is great. I love working with cards like that. Um, I, I, but I, you know, the reason why it doesn't look like I was having fun is because I had just blown up that enormously expensive piece of hardware. So, I mean, I'd rather not have to worry about that if at all possible. And, you know, it's not the first time it's happened. So that's why I didn't look too happy. But in the process of doing that work, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, all right. Uh, Brian's West Coast Disney Adventure, maybe Steve's team. So Steve, um, Steve was very helpful with, when I was diagnosing a, a different problem that I was having with a, a different GPU, unrelated. Um, but he doesn't have anybody who is familiar with this, as far as I know. His, Andrew, his new hire is, um, or Patrick, I'm sorry, Patrick, his new hire is, I think he's an electrical engineer, but I don't know if he's familiar with this. I don't know. I could reach out to him. <clears throat> uh, what GPU is it? It's a 6900 XT. Okay. Builds really recommended a GPU repair channel called Tech Cemetery. Okay. Well, I'll check that out for sure. Um, I mean, if they could potentially help. I don't know where they're located. So, yeah, we'll check it out. Um, something else that was GPU related that I wanted to show you guys is this card. So, uh, there's going to be more content on this card on the channel coming up. Uh, I'm going to do a build with it. I actually might do a dedicated video about it. And the reason for that is that this card, this enormous brick of a GPU is the lowest end NVIDIA Ampere card that you can buy. This is a RTX 3060. So um, this is MSI's obviously Gaming X Trio version of the RTX 3060. And um, it's intriguing to me that they chose to use this cooler for this card. And as a result, there are some quite problematic things that happen, like the price of it, when you can buy it, sorry, I'll preface that, um, the retail price on this card is $519. And when they sent it to me, you know, I, I know that the, the price was lower. They, they blamed tariffs. They had to raise it. I don't know how much of that is true or not. It doesn't really matter. The end result is that this card, when it's in stock, the MSRP is $519. And this is supposed to be a low end card for like 1080p gaming, maybe 1440p. So is it, is it, some kind of a, I mean, is it because they chose to use this giant cooler? Uh, is it because they just felt like they could um, jack up the price because of the supply issue? I don't know, but I think that this kind of a card is problematic considering that the this is a 60s series card. And say just a couple of years ago, the GTX 1060, when it launched, I think it launched at $300 or $280. I forget, something like that. So this is, I mean, almost double that price and it's the same class of card. So I don't understand why this would be a thing. Why, I don't know who would buy this given the option, regardless of the fact that it's probably a pretty good performer. It's probably like the coldest or the coolest running RTX 3060 that you can buy, I would imagine. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why they chose to make the decision or if there were other factors in play. But um, $519 for an RTX 3060 seems absurd to me uh, at retail, you know. So, yeah. So I did want to show that because this did come in uh, prior to launch. And I told MSI specifically that I wasn't going to have launch day coverage just because... Um, launch day coverage on my channel tends to underperform and I wanted a better 
ROI for both me and for MSI, and I wanted to get more eyeballs on whatever video I was gonna do. So I told them, you know, hey, I'm not gonna have this on day one, so they understand. Um, but it'll be featured on the channel. I'm sure it's gonna be a good performer. It's gonna look really good, but $519 is such a tough pill to swallow. I don't really understand why. Um, so let's uh, let's see what people are saying here. Uh, tech cemeteries in the USA. That's great. Okay, good news. Good news. Uh, way too much for thirty sixty. Yeah. Uh, it's because they can. Maybe Stephen. Stephen and I actually were talking about this. Like uh, we had kind of a sm short conversation on Twitter about this, and then we took it offline and we were discussing it. There's, there's definitely the possibility that it, there's some greed that plays in, that they can charge that much for these cards. But we don't know what exactly the tariff situation is, how it affects them. This is, so this is a lot of metal. This is a huge card. This is a huge heat sink. There's a lot of metal on here. And as such, tariffs are probably gonna hit this pretty hard. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what exactly played into it. I, I'm not going to speculate, but I mean, it could be that they raised the price because they could. It could be that they raised the price because they had to. And in all likelihood, some, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, in Australia, they've been, you've been paying $1,000 plus for GPUs. Well, Honestly, I think if, if GPUs were available for a thousand dollars here, they'd also they'd also get bought up because they just they're just not they just don't exist. They're not in stock. Um, okay, best budget upgrade option for a nine seventy. Have an i five an i five eighteen hundred. I don't know what an i5 1800 is and a 14 and a 144 hertz 1080p panel so the problem is like i could doesn't matter what i say here for an upgrade option for a 970 because nothing exists anyway so uh you know so here's a here's a kind of a sideways rant about this about this whole gpu situation um it's so the last time this happened this kind of a gpu shortage uh, was with the previous crypto boom in 2017. And when that happened, um, prices went back to normal, or at least availability came back to being kind of normal within a couple of months, a few months. I don't, I don't remember exactly what the timeline was there. But this current shortage started in like September, and it's now March. And we're nowhere near getting stuff back into stock. So... I remember myself, other tech press people, you guys, the viewers, commenters saying, you know, give it a few months in September, October, like give it a few months, things will come back, it'll be okay. Now it's been a few months and things aren't coming back and things aren't okay and prices are still terrible. Um, and it's likely because crypto is still doing really well. And unless we see a significant crash, I don't know that things are gonna get better anytime soon until some somehow we see more supply introduced into the market so um yeah i i don't know I, i'm not entirely sure there is your uh rtx 3060 um but i don't know when you're going to be able to buy one and that sucks like I, i'm i'm sorry i th the problem is that i i still have to continue making content right like i have to continue to to work with the products that are sent to me and put out information on them because it's eventually they'll be relevant, I hope, uh, you know, but we'll see. Uh, okay. Are tariffs a US thing because I've never heard of that in the UK on PC parts? Yes. Shipping costs are also a factor. What used to cost $2 a pound to ship before the pandemic now cost $10 a pound to ship. Sure, yeah, that absolutely could play into it. Uh, Super chat from old man Ian. Just stopping by to say, hey, and GPU availability sucks and will likely for the rest of 2021. I think that that's 
on that's unfortunately probably accurate i i don't know i hope that's not the case but i mean it's march and we are seeing we're seeing the situation get worse so i don't know um all right so why don't we get to the next part of my um the stream where we open up some boxes because i got some stuff that um will be pretty cool to show you guys so all right this is these are these are things that you guys may have already seen these are not brand new products right so pool master and i have a good relationship and they had hit me up a few months ago now and said hey do you want to take a look at our new mice and i said yeah absolutely and they said well which ones we have two limited edition um mm 711s new colors and then we have this brand new mm 720 coming out um and it's coming out in black and white and i'm like how about we do this why don't why don't you send me all of them and i will do a video on them and um you know maybe tie it into some other peripheral stuff and so they said yes they sent these over and i had never had a chance to feature them on a video and I feel, honestly, I feel pretty bad about it because these are really cool products. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. This doesn't count as the unboxing. I still have boxes over there to open. Um, but I wanted to pop a couple of these open and just show you guys because these are really cool looking. And um, especially like these colorways of these, these limited edition colorways. So this, what color is this? Does it even say? Should say. I don't know. Okay. It doesn't say this is blue, <laughs> blue of some kind. Check out that blue. That's, that's really cool. I think. So for those of you guys who like the MM 710, 711 that they put out last year, um, this is just a new, like limited edition blue colorway of it. And I think this looks really cool. Uh, super lightweight, high speed mouse, really nice cord, uh, really good for like FPS gaming. Um, I did a comparison on the channel where I looked at this mouse versus the final mouse ultralight two versus the model O or the model O minus. And, um, this one didn't fit my hand. Great. I don't know how to really describe it. I didn't, I wasn't as comfortable with this mouse as I was with some others, but I have fairly large hands, um, especially compared to like a smaller ultralight mouse. And... I think that's probably the issue because I know a lot of people really like these. Let me get the green one out of the box. I haven't even opened the green one. Come on. All right. Ooh, this is sexy. Look at that one. That is a really cool, like pearl, pearl effect green. I don't really know what to call it, but um, that's a really sharp looking color. The blue is $35 at Micro Center. That's awesome. That's a really good deal for a very good mouse. Uh, okay. Kevin Farrell, your hands are small. That's why you double all the time. That's a volleyball joke, folks. Nobody wants to talk about volleyball. Um, take a look at these really quickly. Um, but these are the MM720s. Actually, let me just pull pull this one out. No, oh, this one. Have I opened this one yet? Yes, I opened this one. So these are bizarre. These are so weird to feel in your hand um, because of the shape and the fact that they are so light. This feels like there's... I don't know if you guys can really tell how like how nothing this feels like. It feels like a hollow shell. It does not feel like a functional product. It is so small and light and oddly shaped, but it's supposed to be like it's supposed to fit your um, your ring finger over here, and it's supposed to contour to the side. This mouse, despite being smaller than the MM711, fits my hand better because of the shape. 
It is wider and lower. Um, but this mouse is really cool too. Uh, but I, I use a, a Model D regularly and I find that to be ideal for me. I like the ergonomic shape and for like first person shooter games, I've been using the cyberpunk edition of the Razer Viper Ultimate. So I, I'm not in, I'm not about to switch from those, but these mice are really, really cool. Um, all right. So let me quickly pack these away. They look comically small. Yeah. Yeah. They look comically small. Exactly. All right. Okay. So Corsair sent me three boxes and before we look at that, we're going to look at this. Now this from Sticker Mule. Now these are, I ordered these. Um, so, you know, this isn't like a company sent these to me, but this is, the, I ordered these for a reason. I think that it's something that people might want for some reason. I might start like put, you know, if I ever send anything out or there's a giveaway or anything like that, I might start like including some of these. Sticker sheets. So, I don't know my, why you might want a BPS custom sticker. Uh, I know why I would want them because that's, uh, the, I guess this is the sticker mule. Um, but you got on the sticker sheet, you have two big ones and two small ones. And um, I'm very excited about this. I think this is, I'm unreasonably excited about it because it doesn't really mean a whole lot to you guys, but this came in this week and I was like, ah, let me hold off on opening this and kind of open it on stream. So yeah, this is like a pack of, of stickers that um, I thought were really cool. And they're really easy to get made too. So um, I don't think that my, um, I don't think my store has stickers. I might, I know my old store had stickers and when I switch stores, I don't know if I have stickers anymore. Anyway, now I have stickers. All right, um, moving on. So we've got, like I said, three boxes from Corsair. Um, I don't know which, well, I know which box has the embargo product in it. We're gonna open that one next. The reason I know is because, well, I'll tell you in a second. Um, but they sent me a couple other things too. So they have some new products, mostly from Elgato. So, this is their light strip. So, um, Elgato is, I mean, Corsair and Elgato, whatever, whoever you want to call it. I mean, the same company now. Um, but they're putting out a whole bunch of stuff for streamers. And one of the things that they're doing is they want to, I don't know, improve ambient lighting around the streamer's setup. So this is, that is a roll of LEDs. How, how much is this? I think I remember them saying like two meters or something. Let's say how many, yeah, two meters. So this is, this is two meters of light strip. Um, I don't remember what the price is offhand. I'd have to look that up, but, uh, I mean, it's an LED light strip, right? So like what, what's special about it? Well, what's special about it is that it integrates with the rest of their ecosystem. So it comes with like a controller, little controller box and an adhesive strip. Uh, it comes with, you know, your universal plugs. And then it comes with the power brick. Um, but this is going to integrate perfectly with like your stream deck, which is honestly becoming pretty ubiquitous in the streaming space. So it's easy to change on the fly, like whatever colors you have going on on your desk or around your monitor or whatever. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with these. I mean, I guess I could decorate the, the set here with them, but um, they sent these over to me and I was like, all right, well, let's, let's see what they're all about. Um, but they're honestly, they're pretty basic light strips. It's just, they have the, the functionality of working with your existing ecosystem which I think is the biggest selling point for sure. 
Everybody has put videos today about these products. Don't know why you're still under embargo. This is not the. This is not what was under embargo. The next box has what's under embargo. So, here's a little fun story. Corsair. So, there you go. So, Corsair sent me a couple of boxes and they told me what was in them. And one of them was this embargoed product. And I said, well, my plan is to open everything on stream and show people. And would it be okay with you guys if I um, open this stuff on stream and gave everybody kind of like a sneak, pre sneak preview of this new product, even though the embargo doesn't lift for, well, I don't even know if I could say for exactly how long. Um, and they said, okay, you could do that, but you can't show the name of the product. So I had to open this box and I had to go into the box and I had to pull out the products and I had to block off the names. So that's why you're going to see these and they're going to look silly. There's more in that box. Where are we here? These are new fans from Corsair. That's all I could say. I know that's weird. And uh, I know it's, 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 it's a little bizarre that uh, this is all we can do. Um, why is my main camera not focusing? Hey, focus on my face. My face is here. Get right over here. Focus. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so I have blocked off the names wherever they are on the package, but clearly these are Corsair RGB fans. Um, these are coming soon from Corsair and, um, Corsair also, uh, I, they, they always have like interesting fan designs. Some are more performance focused, some are more aesthetic focused, but you could always count on a quality product from them when it comes to this kind of stuff. So while I can't really dive too deeply into this, or what this is going to be or why you might want them, um, you know, they're pretty cool. So here is your sneak preak, sneak preak, sneak, sneak preak, sneak preview of an embargoed product from Corsair that you will be seeing soon. Super chat from Neil Bell, 999. And another one for $1.99 that says, hey, you. <laughs> What's up, Neil? Um, thanks for stopping by, man. So um, what else is going on in here? Sick preview, bro. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for the troll. Appreciate it. Uh, another another high there from Neil Bell, $4.99. Cut it out, Neil. All right, this is, what's, uh, this is the other thing that's in that box. Uh, new power supply. So this isn't, I mean, they've had the RM series for, for quite a while now, but um, they're constantly like, you know, rebranding it or like revamping it a little bit. And um, they sent me this to use in a build. So the cool thing about this is that um, it has like this, the fan shroud look, it like kind of ties in with their new aesthetic their new um, like triangular ventilation pattern that they're using on their uh, cases. So they're trying to make it like all, uh, all uniform and all kind of tie in together. So while the, the power supply itself is just a, it's an 850 watt fully modular uh, 80 plus gold rated power supply. It's gold, right? Gold. Yeah. Um, so they've done this before, but uh, this is now, you know, the refresh of it. And it now, uh, now looks like the rest of their cases do, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So put that away. Neil, stop super chatting. I can't read all your super chats, you dummy. All right, where's this box going to go? If I chuck this box off, 
It's going to hit a camera. I guarantee it. Yeah, all right, we did it. Uh, okay, so... All right. I don't like that pattern. So she be like, well, I mean, that's the pattern that Corsair is going with. So this next box is huge. So I'm going to open it on the floor and then just show you guys what's in it. So I do know what is in it. Come on. You know what? Come on. You guys remember when I was like, I'm gonna open it on the floor, and then I and then I didn't. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Wave panels. Oh. Okay. So, why don't we do this? Um. You can, can you even see, see that? Sort of. So these are the new Elgato wave panels. Uh, I know uh, Epos Vox did a video on these today, but these are the new Elgato like sound dampening panels that that like interlock and they mount in a very creative way. When um, when Corsair emailed me about these, I was very lukewarm. Um. Not because I don't think that there's a need for them. Like I, there's streaming is such a big thing now and like people want to make sure their streams sound good, etc. But it's such a it's such a bland product, to be honest. But they've done a few things that make them interesting. Oh man. <laughs> I should have thought this through. So can I take can I take one out of here without yes okay all right all right all right I'm gonna have a lot to clean up now so these are the panels themselves they are obviously not your typical square uh, with diamonds on them or whatever you want to call it um, let's see if I can do you know yeah it's not really there we go okay so they have this pattern for a reason this is supposed to be better at, at uh, sound dampening and then they have a, a firmer layer on the back as well this is going to help with mounting and also supposedly um, like absorbs different frequencies of sound um, I'm I'm not fully versed in all the specs on this I'm going off of what I remember um, but you can see that the back here has like mounting places so this isn't just like use sticky tape and put it on your wall and then rip all your paint off um it's it's supposed to be easier to work with than that so i'm not going to open these um these baggies right now but so this is uh this is clips for mounting them and then you have what you do is you build a frame out of these parts and then these will clip into the back of the panels and then you can mount these because they're fairly light. You can mount them with like one screw or two screws or whatever. But they also come with um, some in in the mounting in this mounting little baggie. There are uh, supposedly very easily removable adhesive strips. So you have a couple different ways to mount them. But because you're building on a frame and not necessarily just taking like a foam panel and sticking it to your wall. You won't end up with a situation where you have paint and drywall ripped off. Um, so these are pretty neat. I, I was thinking about maybe putting them like over here or something. I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't need sound deadening over there. I would, if anything, I guess I would need it up there. But I typically I'm pretty good on the echo. I'm pretty good sound control in here. Um, but I think maybe even just for decoration or something. It might look cool over there. I don't know. Maybe. What do you guys think? Um so the hex design is interesting and different to the normal square. Yeah, that that's another thing, right? Like these look like these look a lot better than your typical like, you know, cube that or, or square design that you'd find on a on a regular sound dampening panel. 
it's going to be for this starter kit. I think these are these are a hundred dollars. So um, they are, as you might expect, a little bit more expensive for a streamer focused uh, sound dampening solution. But it does have some benefits. Like these are these are very well constructed. They have easier mounting. They have these frames and clips and stuff. So um, I don't know. Well, well it, it remains to be seen if they're going to be more effective than regular panels would be but they have features that make them better regardless of if they actually do perform better so you know at least they're they're at least elgato corsair is trying to um trying to give you a little bit of value i guess kevin farrell ten dollars can you spot me for tomorrow night well if you didn't give me that ten dollars you would have had ten dollars for tomorrow night but yeah man i'll be there um leviathan prin I feel you on the dead GPUs. Five, oh, $5 super chat. Thank you. I've lost several to OC and modding over the years. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um, Manic Eat pumping, pumping the merch store. Yeah, bpscustoms.com. Do it. Go buy a shirt. Um, they remind me of Kyle's logo. Yeah, they kind of do, right? So if you hold them at a certain angle um, for the camera here. All right, you know what? If I do it like this, it kind of looks like you, you can almost like trick your, head, your mind into thinking that that's a cube right like that's the point in the front maybe so yeah i i could see that why you'd think it would be kyle's logo i thought i was joking when i said a hundred dollars each well they're not a hundred dollars each it's a hundred dollars for the starter kit which is like six panels or something um but it comes with like all the frames and mounting stuff and then i think you can buy additional individual panels I think that's the way it's going to work. Um, so, yeah. Now I got a whole bunch of garbage to clean up. Uh, super chat from Larry O. Philippines, PHP, I think it's Philippines. 125, whatever the denomination is there. Thank you very much, Larry O. Yo, Brian, you featured my old build when you still did that thing. Thought I might help you buy a new GPU. Try not to break it this time. Yeah, yeah, thanks. How many, <clears throat> how many in the box? I think there's six in this box. Six panels in the box. 3D printing. <laughs> Stephen Wilkins just says 3D printing. Um, well, yeah, 3D printing. So I've actually been really getting into 3D printing. So I, I have now not only, so that one video that I did was probably the worst performing video that I had done on the channel in years. Um, I didn't know what the problem was with the viewership because I kind of thought that there would be a pretty heavy crossover between people who enjoy 3D printing stuff and PC enthusiasts, but apparently not, which is unfortunate because honestly, I really enjoy it. I think it's the same thing with doing like the extreme overclocking stuff, right? It's PC adjacent and it's different than just doing a build or a review. So I was really into it. I am still really into it. I think 3D printing is great. Um, I bought, uh, so I have a monoprice voxel and I also bought, um, a Creality Ender 6 and I have done significant mods to the Ender 6. So now for those of you in the know about 3d printing, um, I designed a, a little mounting bracket that allows me to do direct drive on there now. Um, uh, and I did some other things I installed all kinds of lighting and cameras and stuff. So I'm into it. Like 3D printing is great. I 3D printed myself an RC car, uh, which also kind of got me back into the RC car hobby, which I did when I was like eight years old or something like that. Uh, I have some great RC car stories. And one of the things that I was going to uh, unbox here was something that came from Amazon that was not as, was supposed to come at like noon and is still not here. And it was an RC car because I bought like a, a cheaper one from Amazon because um, I think they're really cool. But I was going to tell you guys an RC car story along the way. Um, Matthew Lang says, ooh, videos on the Ender 6, please. I have an Ender 3. Um, if you have a 3, you're probably good. The Ender 6, I mean, the Ender 6 is obviously is much different. It's a um, Core XY machine, and it's big. I think it's huge. It's like this this big, or something like that. Um, so I may or may not do videos on it. Like I said, the interest in that kind of content seemed really, really low. Um, I don't know why that would be. You know, I, I it was unfortunate because I really enjoyed making that kind of content. And um, why don't we do this? You guys could stare at my dead GPU as we talk. 
<laughs> Why don't I prop this up with the uh, this one? There we go. All right. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that content and I think 3D printing is great. It's a really fun and interesting hobby. I've learned now to like 3D model some stuff now, which is not something that I was ever into before. So it not only is like functional, but it's just, it's just interesting in a different way than PC hardware generally is. And I thought you guys would dig it and you know, that's okay if you didn't. Um, but because you didn't, I probably won't be doing a whole lot of that kind of content doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me to invest that kind of time to make a full video on it and nobody really wants to watch it. So, um, yeah. So Kevin Holmes, do you watch major hardware's YouTube channel? He likes using his 3d printers. Yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, so I don't regularly watch his stuff, but I have seen his, I have seen his channel. Um, his videos are great. Uh, he does some, some funny stuff and, uh, for 3d printing all those fans and stuff was really interesting. Um, make a second channel for 3d printing BPS 3d. So I have a second channel for cars that I, that I putting on pause. Uh, and I think I have talked about this before. It's just simply because I, I want to have something that I don't need to, I don't, I don't feel obligated to make content about. Like a, I have a, an interest that I don't need to document and make sure is presentable for you guys. Like I could just enjoy it. So if I want to go and wrench on a car or something then I could just, no, don't have to worry about setting up a camera at a good angle and, you know, making sure my, my ass isn't in the shot or something. Um, so, yeah. So it's same kind of same thing for 3d printing. Like I really enjoy it. And, um, maybe that's something that I just won't feature anymore on the channel, you know, uh, do, do it just for fun and blog style, drop out, drop it out. Well, yeah, I mean, say it's still though, it's, it's, the content creation aspect of it is still, still takes a toll. It's still, a, um, there's still a cost to it, right? For me. So it's a time cost and a production quality cost and whatever else I need to do. Um, all right. Shane East, like I have over, over 20 Tamiya RC cars. So the story that I was going to tell was about like how I got into doing RC stuff when I was a kid. And it was because it was the eighties and, um, uh, my friend, like one of my childhood friends had the Tamiya Hornet. And I always was jealous of that. Cause the only RC cars I ever had were like, you know, the Tyco nothing cars. And eventually my dad bought me a Kyosho Raider. And then we got into the hobby and I got, there was a local hobby shop with a track like this giant dirt track that we would go to on Sundays and watch all the races and then I got into racing and um so I was into it for a number of years into my teens for sure um like the 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 old team Losi stuff like the JRX2 JRXT I had I had a, a associated RC10 like the original so that's that's how old I am but yeah so RC cars were a thing for me when I was a kid and I always wanted like the highest end stuff and I can never really afford it because I was 12. So, um, you know, now that I can afford it, like I, I would like to at some point, but you know, the RC hobby is weird. I don't know that there's any real RC enthusiast crowd in Maryland. Uh, anybody to go and like race RCs with, or, you know, whatever, go to a track or something. I don't even know if that really exists around here. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just get some stuff and race it around my, my yard or something like that and just have a good time. <clears throat> Uh, all right. So I've been going for about an hour and I, unfortunately, like I said, I was supposed to have more stuff to unbox and I don't. So we unboxed a bunch of stuff, but yeah, don't forget about these, 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 uh, unreleased Corsair fans that I cannot name. I'm not allowed to name. Why isn't this focus? This camera sucks to focus. There we go. So, yeah. And, um, I don't know guys. Well, so you, you, uh, well, what's going on with you? Would you, would you like me to answer any questions, um, or go over anything in particular, any recent videos that you guys saw that you want me to talk about in a little more detail? Um, gear seekers just started to do mini cuts of the build videos and his stories, 3d printing time lapses on your stories, maybe. So I have the camera set up 
in each of my 3D printers, which where I, I could do that. Um, but I've never used YouTube stories and I don't have an Instagram. So I don't know if that would be really prudent for me to start doing. I've toyed around the idea of doing stuff with the new shorts format, but I that strikes me as very TikTok. And I don't know that that's something that I want to do. Um, it's It's hard. So they're limited to 59 seconds, I think. And you have to be able to capture somebody's attention and convey a message, tell a story effectively in that 60 seconds, 59 seconds, whatever it is. Um, and my content is not really angled towards that. I've considered it though. You might see some shorts for me in the future. Uh, how is the dog? The dog is awesome. The dog is upstairs right now. He's relaxing with the wife and he's probably on the couch uh, just hanging out, but he's great. Um, he is a lot of fun and he is looking forward to when the weather gets a little bit warmer, we can go back to the dog park because that is his favorite thing in the world. Uh, going to test Rocket Lake. I'll test anything, man. Yeah, that, there are, there are some things in the works. Um, let's see. You can include stuff you print if it will go into a build. Yeah, that's that's certainly reasonable. There's no reason I couldn't do that or, or won't do that. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars super chat from Matthew Lang. That is unnecessary, sir. Thank you very much. Can you take Kyle out to eat when you do when you guys do your collab? Here's a bit to cover the cost in case you do. Doesn't need to be in the video though. Oh, for sure. We will there will be there will be uh food eaten and beverages consumed. Um, and that this will help. Thank you very much, Matthew Lang. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sticking around and, and your support uh, throughout the years. Does anyone make a good PWM 180 millimeter fan? That seems to be the forgotten size, right? So there's 120, 140, and 200. So there's no 160s or 180s that I know of. Um, it's not so much uh, because they can't be made. It's probably just because there's no place to put them like in the PC space at least there's no mounts for 180 millimeter or anything so the reason why 200 millimeter is now becoming more of a thing that you can buy and you can even buy 200 millimeter radiators is because companies started making cases that support that form factor so if there's no case out there that supports it then you probably won't see it recent AMD announcement about 3000 series CPU supporting recyclable bar and NVIDIA bring support for it this month for 30 series cards. Are you going to make a segment on this? No, I will not. Um, it's not that it's not a worthwhile technology, but it's like a deep dive subject. That's more of a gamers nexus type of video. Uh, I, I certainly, so the last deep dive review content that I made was for the launch of um, Big Navi, right? The 6800, 6800 XT. And I probably spent, I don't know, two weeks benchmarking cards and deep diving into data, um, looking at percent scaling, doing productivity tests. Uh, I went, I did, I included a whole bunch of different GPUs in that, in that test suite as well. Uh, and all my, my data was presented, uh, sorted by, you know, and, um, by, you know, top to bottom from best performing to worst. So I tried to make it a very easily digestible video, but also full of information and data. It was a full 10 minutes of slides. Now I know, you know, for some channels, that's not a lot, but for me, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, it's a lot of data to collect and analyze for somebody who doesn't do this full time. And that video fell flat on its face. Like I, I think it definitely has something to do with the fact that it was a launch day video. And, um, there were a lot of other channels putting out the same content at the same time, but I enjoy doing that kind of data collection and analysis because that's kind of I, I used to do that a lot and um, it, it needs to be something that I can be, <clears throat> be certain is worth it for me to do in order to put that much time into it and collecting, you know, analysis of the um, resizable bar stuff would fall into that category. Matthew Clemens, $5. Wanted to say thanks again for videos and tutorials. Built my first PC water cooled and it is sick. Send me some photos, man. Shoot me, uh, shoot me a tweet or something like that. I'd love to see it. I, I am always really thankful that people reach out to me and say thank you for helping them with stuff like water cooling. Water cooling is obviously very complicated and we haven't done a whole lot of it on the channel recently, which is again, something that I, I, I really, I want to do again. I want to do more of, um, 
the problem is a lot of water cooling is going to tie into high-end hardware and a lot of high-end hardware is just not available so running into roadblocks everywhere with this kind of stuff and um i'm glad that people took a lot from my water cooling tutorials that that series that i did like the water cooling for beginners series i did a couple of years ago um all has pretty like really decent viewership and consistent viewership so it's something that people are finding as they are searching for that information over years now which is great which is exactly why i put it out um so i'm hoping that people you know took some stuff away from that um <clears throat> what keyboard do you have there um this this is a corsair k68 is that what this is yeah k68 this is the this is a couple years old now um but it is their waterproof mechanical gaming keyboard uh, I did a review of this one where I poured water all over it um, probably a few years ago now. But the reason why I use this when I'm streaming is um, that I often have uh, have drinks at the table like I do here. And you never know what's going to happen. So when I – and plus this is a keyboard that honestly if it gets damaged, I don't really care about. The biggest flaw about this – I'll show you guys. The biggest flaw about this keyboard is because of the membranes underneath the keys – um, maybe it's better if I do this. Okay. Because of the membranes underneath the keys, the keys don't aren't very tight around this because they can't sit fully flush down against the plate, uh, the top plate. So they kind of hover a little bit and they're very easy to just knock right off. So that's the biggest problem. And um, even though this keyboard is pretty cool in that it is waterproof, um, which isn't a feature that you often see. Hold on. I'm going to be hitting all kinds of buttons. I wonder if I'm going to end the stream. Um, it, I, I have problems typing on it for extended periods of time because the keys just kind of fly off. So that's something that I kind of discovered after the fact, after I did my review. Uh, I want a ducky panda keyboard, but they are over 200. You know what? I want to show you guys something. Hold on. Sit tight for a second here. You know what? Here. You guys hang out. Look at this. Mourn over my broken GPU. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. All right, I'm back. All right. I know what he's grabbing. You don't know what I'm grabbing. Don't tell me what to grab. I'll grab whatever I want. Okay. Let's bury this stuff. This is going to be a cleanup job. That's great. I just cleaned the basement. Um, this is a keyboard from a company called Alipow. Check it out, hold on. Check it out. That is made of rosewood. It is actual wood. It is um, cherry key stems. Right now, it's got I forget what I I forget what I ordered it with because they had to order it with something. But I have um, what I have lubed Halo clears coming, and I have a whole bunch of different keycaps that I could use here. And it's hot swappable, so it's um, I take off like. 
If I take off that, I don't know how well you could see, but that is a hot swappable switch. So you could easily pull it out, put a different switch in. Uh, it has media controls. It has little LEDs where I'm trying to do this by there. Little LEDs right there for indicators of like caps lock and whatever else. Um, but it is 100% real rosewood. It is really, really cool. So yeah, super pumped about this board uh, when it came in, but uh, I have to wait a little while to get. So I, Mike lubes his own switches um, and uh, I don't have the patience for that. So I have somebody do it for me. So I'm getting um, I'm getting somebody to do to lube and film my switches and get I got new stabilizers for this as well. It sounds like it sounds okay. I don't know if you could really I don't know if you could really hear it all that well, um, but it sounds okay. But it's going to sound a whole lot better. So. Um, yeah. Tech Tonic. Great work with the videos and dedication over the years. Thank you. Uh, did you receive a white version of the Meshlicious by chance or just the black unit? Just the black one. I don't think the white one's out yet, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, full size hot swap isn't very common. That's why I bought it because I, that, I've been looking for that for a long, long time. And when this came out, I was like, I'm like, oh, and it's 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 USB C, um, and it's wood, which is really cool and unique, and it's hot swap. So yeah, I was like, I'm I'm in, I'm in. Um, let's see. What else? Let me guess, three fifty. No, it wasn't three fifty. Yeah, oh, Mike, did Mike put a? I might put a link to it. Yep. Is that the one? Yep. That's the one. Yeah. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not like super, super expensive. Um, so yeah, I think it's totally worth it. I think it'd be a really, really cool little thing to add to my uh, collection. Um, all right. So can you get different keycaps for that? Yes, you can get different. Yeah. Anything that'll fit on a cherry stem. All right, so anything else, guys? Um, my wife is coming downstairs. She's falling down the stairs. She is. She's she is not getting the big box. Thank you. <laughs> All right, she just brought me some more boxes to unbox, uh, but we're we're basically almost done here, guys. So, um, anyway. Um, you guys have anything else to ask? Uh, we're just about done here. We, we've been going for like an hour 10, um, which is, which is kind of a little bit over target, but you know, uh, Mike, you're going to do a build with this or the Meshlicious is that, I don't know which one you're talking about. Um, both of them are really cool. The Meshlicious was a surprise to me because of how terrible the name was and when they, they, when Lee and Lee or, um, uh, SSUPD, it was my contact from Lee and Lee hit me up and she was like, she was like, Hey, we have this case. Um, it's cool. This is what it's called. And when she said the name before I had any information, I was like, I have no interest in this. Um, and then she showed it to me and I was like, Oh yeah, this is awesome. So, um, the name is awful and should be changed, but yeah, the case is surprisingly excellent. Oh, excuse me. The keyboard. Doing a build with the keyboard. Yeah, you should do a build with this keyboard. It's really cool. Um, all right. So I guess that's it, guys. So um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little quick unboxing and discussion about GPUs and stuff. Um, I don't know. It, it, the GPU situation really is just terrible. I, I wish that we could do something about it, but I, I mean, it's, it's, I don't have the capacity. I'm not, you know, unfortunately, like I would love to be able to help you guys out, but, um, you know, that's kind of why I did that, that three gaming PC giveaway a month or two ago. 
because I know like that's that that kind of hardware is really really usable for somebody and it doesn't do anything on my shelf so I wanted to help people out and um I've heard from I think I heard from two of the three people confirming that they got they got it cuz I I wasn't I mean they have tracking on them I just haven't checked in on the tracking but um yeah only one of them was in the United States and it was like the next it was in Pennsylvania I'm in Maryland so uh, it was really close by, so that one got there real quick, but the other one's not so much. Um, so in any event, um, I hope the people that um, that got the... Sorry, what's my cat doing? My cat's chewing on some boxes. Um, I hope the people that got those those uh, those builds really are enjoying them and getting a lot out of them. Uh, but I, like I said, that's that's like as much as I could do. You know, I wish there was more that I could do as far as GPU availability goes, but it's not the case. Uh, DG Burns, see if Corsair would sponsor you doing a Hydro X customized water cooling setup. They, yeah, they've offered that. Um, they've, they've offered that several times, actually. They absolutely would. Um, I don't, uh, I don't know that I would have anything to do it with right now. Maybe I could talk to them about it, but it would have to be like a really cool project. The problem is that, so... When I do my builds on the channel, my, my, like, if I do like a weekly build or a monthly build or, you know, where most of the builds you see, those are so temporary. They come apart as soon as the video is over. They're put together for testing and to see how good a GPU CPU combo is and to see how the thermals are in a case and to see how that build performs all together. And it's, it's essential information for somebody looking to build a system like that. But I don't need it to be together any longer than doing the video and I need those parts for other things. So a lot of times they go into other comparison testing or I'll reuse those parts for another build or something like that. So um, the problem with doing a full water cooled build, full sponsored project like that, when I don't have any specific purpose for the end result of that project is that I, I'm putting a whole lot of time and effort into something that it has no, there's no like end goal for that project to exist so i feel bad like hitting up a company like corsair and being like hey i need all this stuff i'm going to use it for a video and then never touch it again or you know what i mean like i i i i'm guilty i feel guilty about that like jay does a lot of water cooling projects that even if he's not using them specifically they stay together right he's got like that threadripper symbiote build that stays together he had the inwin uh, D frame build that stayed together. I don't know. I don't know exactly what his use case is for all that stuff, but I know for the most part, he's probably not using them on a daily basis. Like they mostly just are set decoration, um, which is fine. At least they stay together. Whereas me, I don't have the space. I, I need the parts for other things. I can't commit two 2080 TIs to a project that's just going to sit on a shelf. So, um, you know, I can't really do that with any clear conscience and be like, hey, course, you're sending me all this stuff. I'm going <laughs> to, it'll be in one 15 minute video and then, and then it'll disappear. So like, I don't, I don't, I feel bad about that. So I don't generally do it. Um, but if I could come up with like a good angle for it, like a, a specific like themed build, or if they have maybe a new case launch that they want to showcase and I'm like, all right, well, let's do a project in it and do it like a multi-part project or something like that, that might work. Um, so I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant, but it's definitely something that could happen. Yeah, Mike says, uh, really, this is how a lot of channels handle their builds. If you didn't know, yes, this is absolutely true. Most most channels, honestly. Full water cooling build and auction it off. I So I, I'm not going to lie and say I never sell hardware. I mean, I certainly do. But most of the time, the stuff that I'm selling is stuff that I've purchased myself. Um, I mean, I but I, I, I don't know. I don't know that I would really... My cat's wrecking havoc over there on packages. Um, I guess if I was doing it for charity or something, but the problem is if I'm giving away a whole bunch of high-end hardware, 
Like, I don't know if that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's doable. I don't have the giant stores of stuff that some other channels do. Um, short of getting donations from Micro Center or a new egg. Yeah, that's kind of the, that's the point, right? Like if I got a whole bunch of hardware supplied, if I got the all the parts supplied to me as like, here, this is a charity project, I would 100% do that. Um, but if all I got was like the water cooling stuff and I had to supply everything else myself, that probably is not really doable. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes of running a YouTube channel that are really interesting that I didn't know about until I got into it pretty heavily. Um, there's a lot of, I mean... I don't know. There's a lot of strategy, a lot of the economics of it are really interesting and different. Um, the advertising is something that you have to learn on the fly um, and ma inventory management, time management, uh, commitments to vendors. There's a lot to keep track of and coordinate. This is not an easy, an easy gig. It seems like a dream job for a lot of people. And it is definitely something that is fun and interesting. But to, you know, for anybody who thinks that this is a walk in the park, yeah, it's not correct. Like I, I do this, I, I started this channel um, with, without the intention of it ever getting to be huge. And it's not huge by any means, but it is certainly at the point where it's decent size. Um, and I can't just like, I have all these responsibilities now all of a sudden for, for projects that are coming up and ads I'm supposed to run and whatever else that they just can't, I can't just make them go away. Like I have to honor those commitments. And that means that I am um, dedicating time and effort and money and resources to to doing that in addition to having a full-time job and a family. So um, it's a lot to manage. And sometimes when, this is, this is kind of where I'm coming from when I say like the ROI for doing a video is not really high, right? So I would love to do more 3D printing content. But if it's going to draw 2,500 views, um, it, it's not worth it for me to, to allocate those resources that would, should otherwise be spent doing other things. So, yeah, I don't know. It's not a sob story. I'm not looking for your sympathy, but this is no walk in the park. It's a lot to do here. Um, so, I don't know. I'm just kind of ranting now. Um, the Captain America build you did was awesome. Thank you very much, Shane. Um, that was for the Wounded Warrior project. Again, that's kind of an underperforming video, which I was surprised about because I was really proud of that. Um, that was something I did in conjunction with uh, Asus and a couple other of the uh, Tough Alliance vendors. And uh, I think it was me, um, Frank. Did Frank do one? Me, Kyle. And I, I think Frank did one too. Damn, I, I forget. Um, there were like four of us, three or four of us that did Wounded Warrior Project builds um, where we we did specific builds for people. Wounded Warriors, uh, you know, got to talk to them a little bit, hear their story. And uh, that was a very, very re rewarding project to do. Um, yeah, I'm definitely happy that I did it. That guy's name was, was Michael. And... Um, he was very, very happy with the system. All right. So I think that's it. So thanks so much for hanging out, guys. Uh, I, I know this, this stream was a little bit different than normal, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But um, in any event, I appreciate you guys hanging out. And I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thanks for asking some questions. Thank you for all your donations. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks, Mike, as always, for coming. Everybody say hi to Mike or say goodbye to Mike and say thank you to Mike. Say thanks, Mike, for not banning me. Um, <laughs> that's that's really what we're looking for here. Please just don't ban me. I'm hoping that he doesn't ban me from my own uh, from my own live stream because it, it's coming. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> but thanks a lot, guys, and uh, have a good night. And hopefully, we'll we'll be streaming a little bit more frequently, uh, if at all possible. Um, see you guys.